they still throw stones, but it's much safer. At least I can go out to the balcony, I can leave my door open, I can leave my shutters open. I can leave the house without worrying about my house being invaded like before. Yeah, this is much better, of course. It's not enough what they done on the market. They occupied all these old floors and they rebuilt them and they built another floor which is not their properties, they don't own it. لجنة شنغار اطلعت قرارات من طرف واحد باسم المسجد الابراهيمي الى قسمين قسم للمسلمين وقسم لليهود صار ورا الابواب المغلقه بالشكل هذا معبد يهودي soldiers are everywhere inside hebron they changed the city to be a military base Hello, my name is Mohammed Hamail, and welcome to another episode of Coffee in Palestine. Today we're in the city of Hebron, the city of patriarchs. Hebron was originally a Canaanite royal city. Today, it's a Palestinian city divided by Israeli military forces. It's a city full of stories, from settler attacks against Palestinians to checkpoints choking it. We'll also be able to pay a visit to the Ibrahimi Mosque, where the 1994 Cave of Patriarchs massacre occurred at the hands of the extremist Baruch Goldstein. We have come here to visit Isa Amr. Isa is one of the many Palestinians who make up the group Youth Against Settlements, who openly oppose Israeli military policies that are spreading the settlements throughout the city of Hebron. So these Israeli policies of settlement expansion and closures will not pass by silently as people like you, Isa, are protesting these policies. Uh, what could you tell us about your activities in Youth Against Settlements? Uh, as you said, that uh, Palestinians are trying to resist the Israeli occupation. As a youth group, we are trying to resist and to oppose the Israeli policies of uh, taking this land, and confiscating this land and changing the Palestinian identity of this land. We do a lot of activities as uh, uh, protests, uh, demonstrations, uh, campaigns, international campaigns, and we are now preparing for Open Shohada Street International Campaign to increase the awareness about what is happening in Hebron and to protect the Palestinian identity of Hebron. Something else we do, very important, we document all the human rights violations which the Israeli uh, occupation forces and the Israeli settlers are uh, doing and you know in, in Hebron we film them we document their their violence we observe them whatever whatever they do here in, in this area and we try to uh, protect the Palestinian families the Palestinian children for, from the settlers attacks from the Israeli uh, soldiers violence and house invasion so you mentioned a lot about uh, the Israeli settlers attacking Palestinians in Hebron could you speak more about that and any specific violations and attacks that they have done in the recently 
Uh, unfortunately, the Israeli settlers who are living in Hebron, they are the most well-known fanatic uh, settlers who are living in, 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 in Palestine, and they are just doing their best to uh, force the Palestinians who are living in this area to leave their homes. So they throw stones, they throw Molotov cocktails, they try to kidnap uh, Palestinian kids, they try to scare the families, they burn the land, they, they steal the olive trees, they, they steal whatever they can from the Palestinians to make their life harder and harder. They just uh, restrict the movement of the Palestinian children by blocking their roads to their schools. So I heard the Shuha district was a very big economic center, it used to tie the north and the south of Palestine together. A lot of businesses were on the street and they were very, it was a very blooming market before 1994. Could you tell us about that, how, how it was affected after the closure of the Shuhada Street? Uh, for us, this is Hebron. Shuhada Street is Hebron. So the Shuhada Street is, is one of the most important streets in Palestine. Because of closing Shuhada Street, we have 1,800 shops closed because of the closure. More than 1,000 apartments closed because of closing Shuhada Street. Something else very important, it's the settlement project in Hebron to confiscate the shops and uh, the apartments in Shuhada Street. So it's very important for us for two reasons, for economical reason and for political reason, because we want to oppose the settlement project all over Palestine, to take them out of our country, to take them out of our cities and our villages and our Street. So this is why Shuhada Street is very important and this is why we named our uh, international campaign uh, in, 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 in the name of Shuhada Street. So uh, maybe you could show us around Hebron right now and we could see about what's going on in this city up close, up personal, from violations to the settlements to the settlers themselves and what else is going on on the Israeli side and what they're doing against the Palestinian people. <laughs> Isa and I began our journey to see for ourselves the damage of the Israeli occupation against the citizens of Hebron. Around us armed settlers observing Sabbath on their way to the Cave of Patriarchs. Of course, we can't take the same route they have, as it is only allowed for settlers. Yes, we are standing here at one of the main entrances of the old city and Shohada Street. There it was the old vegetable fruit uh, markets, the camels market. All the Palestinian uh, handmade markets were in this area. The Israeli occupation forces are closing the, the roads, which is leading you know, to, toward the closed shops by the Israeli military forces. And this is the road where we can go to the Ibrahimi Mosque, and they are trying to, uh, to uh, prevent the Palestinians from going to the Ibrahimi Mosque to uh, try to reduce the number of Muslims who are going to break in, in that, uh, that mosque, watchtowers here, uh, soldiers, uh, settlers are occupying this area which made it as a, as, as a ghost town because the majority of the Palestinians were forced to leave their shops, to leave their homes, to leave their uh, streets, but unfortunately, you know, uh, they are trying to extend the area which is closed by the military forces. We, as Palestinians, we are trying to resist and to oppose this policy of killing the Palestinian identity of Hebron. Usually it's only two, three minutes to reach the mosque. The mosque is here, it's very close here. Okay. But now we need to turn around maybe 20 minutes and go in. more minutes. Yeah, 20 more minutes. And you know, we, we had to have to go through three checkpoints to reach the mosque. Palestinians in Hebron face constant harassment at Israeli checkpoints, whether they are stopped for hours, searched, interrogated, or even arrested. The checkpoint remains a symbol of the hard life these people face. We were standing outside a checkpoint ourselves, about to experience firsthand what does a citizen of Hebron confront on a daily basis. So this is one of the checkpoints and usually it's uh, first we pass a ruler gate, then mm -hmm. we get into a magnometer. The magnometer uh, usually is, is very sensitive for the metal, for the phones, for the, uh, the belt, so it's, it's hard to... Uh, it's hard to get through. Yeah, to get through. This is one of the checkpoints, just, we just passed the magnometer. Usually they detain many Palestinians here mm -hmm. and they make it hard for them to reach the mosque as it's, al it's allowed in, uh, you know, in the international law. Freedom of expression, freedom of religion, it's part of uh, the personal rights of the people all over the world, but here in Hebron it's all violated and they make it harder and harder for the people to reach their, their holy places, their homes, their shops. 
which are completely closed and this area is completely restricted. No Palestinian vehicles are allowed to drive here. Only Israeli settlers' vehicles are allowed to come and drive in our own streets inside our own city. So only, Palestinians are only allowed to walk here, that's what you're yes, saying? Yes, we are allowed to walk in this part of the city. Other, other parts we are not allowed to walk at all. Shohada Street, the main road leading to the Tomb of Patriarchs, is used to be called the central wholesale market of the Hebron region and northern Palestine. Its central location to the tomb and the location of the bus station and police stations made it a natural gathering place. After the February 1994 Cave of Patriarchs massacre, Israel closed the streets to the Palestinians. <laughs> To be protected from the settlers' stones, from the settlers' empty bottles, from the settlers' uh, uh, Molotov cocktails, so they have one uh, method of uh, security for the Palestinians: strengthen your door, strengthen it well, and strengthen your windows to to, to protect and to inform them. Usually our protest aimed to get inside Shuhada Street, which was closed by the Israeli uh, forces. So every year we come and we try to get into our closed street by the Israeli occupation forces. And usually we, we, we fight, confront the soldiers here, they arrest us, they try to uh, send us away from this point. So all our protests are happening here in this area as kind of resistance and opposing the settlements and the occupation project in Hebron. The soldiers are uh, everywhere. The military watchtower has a soldier. Another watchtower to the, you know, to the left of that one has a soldier. Soldiers are everywhere inside Hebron. They changed the city to be a military base. And this began the division of the city, with Palestinians leaving at 2 due to the Israeli security measures which included checkpoints, extended curfews, as well as travel restrictions and settler attacks. من قبل المستوطنين في 2002 أجا أمر عسكري بإغلاق هؤلاء المحلات وطرد أصحابهم 13 سنة إلي مرمي في الشارع مشرد باهم والمستوطنين بنعموا بالمحلات اللي صرفوها لأنها كانت فيها بميات ألوف الشواكل أي إنسان فلسطيني لأن هذه دمنا عرضنا أرضنا والله كريم باهم الله بيبعت لها ناس حريروها ما كنت قالوا اخي انا معي رومتزم في الركاب واخي الثاني على سكوتر ماشي قال ممنوع تعدوا قلت ممنوع انا اعدوا قلت وين نلقي؟ لا بقول لك قلت 1014 كيلو هون بتم يعدوا الصبح الناس عماله بتخف بتطلع يعني هذا ما ياخذ كل عدد هذا بنوا غرفتين بنوا غرفتين وبطلع وهذا سببه كمان سلطه الفلسطيني المفروض هذه المنطقه يدعموها دعم وخليهم يغلوا شوي باهلها المستوطن بيجي هون حافي بعد كذا فترة بتلاقي عنده أربع سيارات وبتلاقي عنده هلال وعنده ليش معنيين في المطرة دي وثبتوهم The old city was something else entirely. Watchtowers everywhere and Israeli military personnel on patrol. 
it is impossible to ignore the tragedy of the military occupation in the old market. I came down here when I was only seven years old to join my father in his business and I'm 53 now. You're talking about at least more than 46 years down here in this market. Nice life here, nice business, not anymore because the settlers, they moved from Giryat Arba, they came down here, then they occupied the main vegetable and the fruit market behind these shops and they built a huge settlement, they call it Abraham Avino settlement. It's not enough what they done on the market. They occupied all these old the floors and they rebuilt them and they built another floor which is not their properties, they don't own it. While you're standing, you could see military army watching tower, a soldier in it 24 hours. And if you come to this side, you could see another military army watching tower. We keep shouting, screaming, complaining, to the soldier at least to stop them because we want to live a decent life, they ignore us. That means sometimes we are wasting our time by complaining and behind all this is to kick us outside here. But the majority of shopkeepers, we are patient, we got used to it and we are determined to stay. We are not going to give up as long as we live. This is our homeland. Right now, we're about to meet Zlicha Muhtasib. She lives under constant settler attacks against her home for years. These attacks are recurring as she is one of the last people living near Shuhada Street. That was closed in 1994. I've been living here for almost 10 years. Um, when I moved here, the cage was not in place. Uh, and it wasn't safe at all to live in the house because settlers could come from the street, they could climb up here to the balcony and invade the house. Also, uh, it was impossible to open the door to the balcony or the shutters. And whenever we opened the, the shutters or the door to use the balcony but for any reason, of course, the settlers would throw stones at us. Many times, by mistake, we left the, the shutters open and we received glass and stone inside the house. That's why I went to uh, TIPH, Temporary International Presence in Hebron, and reported that to them. Uh, they usually pay for uh, installing uh, fences or in protection, doing protection issues for the Palestinians living in, in areas where it is dangerous or you know, they have direct contact with the settlers. So it was them who, who did the work or who paid for the work. I'm born here. I'm used to life in the old city. It's not something new to me. Besides, this is our city. Why should I go to somewhere else? Also, this house is really very beautiful and the place is very unique. Very peaceful, very quiet, except from the settlers just knocking at the door, throwing stones day and night. Other than that, no, it's really good. Good neighbors that and I live near the cemetery, you see, I look at the graves, graveyards every day and this gives me a more determination to keep living here until I die. Zlicha had told me that she can see the city from the rooftop of her home, a grander scale of the misfortune befallen these people, viewed from the rooftops of Hebron's old city. You also see that uh, the, the hilltops are occupied. For example, uh, that uh, red and white antenna is uh, uh, for the, the settlement and uh, 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 police station in that area. So it's uh, the hilltop of uh, yeah, one of the hilltops of Hebron. Uh, another one that we don't see from here, there is a military camp just behind the building there. Yani on the hill to the left, uh, that's in H1. It's the only military camp that was started during the Intifada, I think in 2001. Yani they, they brought the military here because from that hilltop, you can see all over Hebron, yani, uh, the soldiers there can observe on the settlements from this side and they can watch uh, on the, the Palestinians. Also at this hilltop over there, 
if you go with me, you can see that hilltop also. Uh, they have a military base, and uh, from there they can see any uh, very big areas of Hebron, and they can watch on the Palestinians just to to protect the settlements here in the in the old city. Finally reaching the Ibrahimi Mosque, for a moment we were almost forbidden from filming there. The guards had no reason to prevent us, however. We had coordinated our visit, and eventually we were allowed to enter, but we had to leave our sound equipment at the gate. After passing through, we walked among the ancient walls that witnessed ages of different rulers over the city. The Abrahamic Mosque, a holy place for both Muslims and Jews, where Abraham had passed through and bought as a burial ground, the mosque is a site of many crimes and attacks against worshippers. Memories of the 1994 massacre here will never fade. How do you know, friends, this is an Islamic temple. لا يحق لغير المسلمين الصلاة فيه ولكن في 25-2-94 دخل مستوطن متطرف اسمه باروك جولدشتان على الحرم دخل من الباب اللي عنده دخلته منه في 15 رمضان يوم الجمعة الفجر وأطلق النار على المصلين في المنطقة هاي في منطقة الإسحاقية فاستشهد داخل الحرم 29 شهيد والصواب تقريبا فوق 170 جريح فعلى أثر المدبح اللي صارت داخل الحرم الإبراهيمي اليهود اطلعت قرار من طرف واحد شكلوا لجنة اسمها لجنة شمغار لجنة شمغار اطلعت قرارات من طرف واحد باسم المسجد الإبراهيمي إلى قسمين قسم للمسلمين وقسم لليهود صار وراء الأبواب المغلقة بالشكل هذا معبد يهودي كنيس يهودي وهون مصلى للإسلام اليهود مخدين من مساحة المسجد 60% طب أنت بتعرفوا يا إخوان حتى إضافة لذلك وضعونا أبواب أكترونية على أبواب الحرم الإبراهيمي هلا هذه الابواب الالكترونيه ابواب تفتيش طبعا اليوم انت بتشلح عوائق ابنك بيشلح عوائق المره بتتفتش الزلمه بتتفتش فالوضع يعني الحمد لله رب العالمين احنا يعني صامدين وصابرين وان شاء الله يتعالى الا يكون الفرج عن قريب بتعرف هذه يعني هي هذه المشاكل اليوميه بالنسبه للحرم الابراهيمي الاذان يمنع المغرب في الحرم يمنع حتى اشعارا اخر ممنوع يرتفع نهائيا بسبب حجة اللي هي مشاعر المشاعر الدينية الإسرائيلية بسؤال يعني إنه إحنا بنزعجه من قولة الله أكبر في الحرم الإبراهيمي لأنه هي غرفة الأدان هم اللي بيتحكموا فيها لأنه هي بالطرف الآخر للحرم بالطرف بالطرف اللي تحت السيطرة الإسرائيلية. The day was coming to an end, and so has our journey through the streets of Hebron with their impossible reality made fact on the ground by a harsh military occupation that has torn this city apart. We will head back to our homes and wake up to our normal lives, though these bazaars will face this tragedy once more in the morning. Despite the settler attacks, checkpoints and problems the people of this city face, there is still hope for a brighter future in Hebron. Its winding streets still hold many secrets and stories, but we will have to leave that for another time, another day, another episode of Coffee in Palestine.